Hey, what's up everybody in the YouTube world? This is Chris, and of course this is my channel, Barn on 11 970 and as always, I thank you guys for checking out my video. Alright guys, I wasn't sure how I was going to start this video. It was an actually a uh, interesting day today. Um, I got a uh, interesting phone call, and I'm not going to get into the full details. Um, all I know is there are some very not nice people in the world. And it... it made me think a lot about what's going on in this world. I mean, yes, uh, as people that have been following my channel for a while know that I've had issues with people on YouTube for whatever reasons. Some of them just don't like me, and some others have alternative motives. I can't control that. Um, what I can control is the way I wish to treat others. And on my way to um, a massage I had to do today, I had to work on this, uh, one of my regular clients, she's this like 67, 68 year old woman, sweet woman. Um, her husband recently passed away. Um, she's going through a lot of emotional problems, very depressed, and I can understand that. Um, losing my father, I can only imagine what it's like to lose a spouse. And with the phone call I had earlier, I could have you know, went in a certain way. I could have gotten angry, could have gotten scared, could have gotten, because you feel almost helpless sometimes. But I ended up, I took the negative aspect of the the, the day. And when I worked on this, this woman for the massage, I just had such a caring nature that I wanted to help this person. And who knows if I really did. I mean, she said she felt better and everything. And it's it's nice to know that people come to me when they need to feel better. And, um, you know, her and I have talked a lot. I mean, she was, you know, going to a therapist to because her husband was her life. She was one of those people that liked to take care of people. And when her husband left, it just like a part of her left her. You know, they were married for like 50 years. So I can only imagine what that must be like. But, I, you know, it really, as I'm doing the massage, you know, one of the things, if you're a massage therapist or anything of that nature, you know, there's a lot of almost meditation because obviously if people don't talk as relaxing music, it's quiet. So you think a lot. And I was just thinking about how can parts of humanity treat fellow human beings with such negativity, with hatred, wanting to hurt one another, to profit off of somebody else's misery and pain. And it's just one of the things, see, you could turn it into negativity because I've realized that you cannot control what others do unless you're evil. If you're evil, and I've made videos showing how easy it is, you can influence people by directing them in a certain way, creating an agenda. But under normal circumstances, the average person is not trying to influence anyone to do anything. They just want to live their lives. They just want to try and succeed, to surround themselves with people who love them, and just live a happy life. And for some reason, there are people in this world that find pleasure in helping to create a disruptive world, to put it best. And the one thing I want to say to my subscribers, the ones that come here regularly, the ones that understand and want to do well, don't let anyone or anything influence your positivity, your love. Because if, if I can teach anything on my channel, <clears throat> I want it to be where people can realize, <clears throat> excuse me, that no matter what evil in this world in, is in this world, no matter how many bad things you see all around you, and when you think that humanity is just not worth saving, to know that you have the ability to do something good, they can't change that. Because even if tomorrow, if somebody put a gun to my head and I was gone from this earth, they cannot change the fact that I tried my best to inspire, to teach love, to try and have kindness for us to work together. That They can only stop something but they cannot change what already is. 
So I want people out there that are here for the right reasons. Don't wait until tomorrow to do something. Don't put it off because like what happened to my father, for those of you who have been here for a while know that my, do my father died in a fire. He and I didn't really speak for the longest time. My parents got divorced when I was 10. Um, he got remarried a couple of years later, moved out of state and was there ever since. Um, I will turn 44 in actually about two weeks. Um, he moved back here two years ago because he wanted to, I guess he finally decided he got divorced from his second wife. He was depressed and he wanted to start his life over again. So he moved back here and he wanted to actually kind of restart things with me. And he didn't have a place to stay. So he was staying at his best friend's house since they were children. I mean, they were best friends since they were probably 10, grew up together and they were friends for life. Long story short, he was living in the basement. I got to see him once, which I'm very happy about because I hadn't seen him in years. And my father was a very kind man, very loving man, but you could tell he was troubled. He absorbed, you know, it's kind of like me, kind of absorbed a lot of the negativity and didn't want to bother other people with it. So he kind of held it in. And you could tell he was, he was loving, he was caring, but he was alone. And he was probably very sad, but he didn't want to show it. And one day there was a electrical problem in the house. Um... My father's best friend and his wife died upstairs. The ironic part is if my father would have stayed down in the basement, he would have been fine. But he walked up the stairs, opened the door, and got about three feet before the smoke killed him. And it just shows that, because I remember that morning, I got a call at about six o'clock in the morning from one of my uncles who's never called me. So I knew that when I was getting this phone call at six o'clock in the morning, that there was not going to be any good news coming from this conversation. And I actually thought it was my grandmother because my grandmother was getting Alzheimer's. She was getting up there. She's like in her mid to late nineties. So I thought maybe that was the call saying, you know, your grandmother had passed. And to find out it was my father, just as we were about to rekindle a father son relationship, it just blew me away. And I think to this day, it still kind of upsets me, you know, because he was a great guy. He never wanted to hurt anybody. He was a very loving person. And I owe a lot, including my oversensitivity, because that's how he was. But I wouldn't change that for the world. Being oversensitive means that you are sensitive to caring, to love. You actually react to negative things in a way that makes you feel bad that they happened. Like, you wouldn't take joy in torturing an animal. You would not take money to hurt another person. And yet there are people out there willing to hurt others or allow others to be hurt. And some of them find pleasure in it. So what I'm saying to my subscribers out there is don't take life for granted. Don't put off tomorrow to do something good. We in this world need to show evil that good is never going to give up. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. There are going to be people who may threaten you or may make you feel bad or may try and stop you for whatever reason. But you have to remember it's a choice. And there is no set future. I mean, prime example. Here's a pen, just an ordinary pen. Now, if I let go of this pen, it's going to drop to the ground. That is its future if left unchanged. So I can make the prediction saying that if I let go of this pen, it's gonna fall down and hit either the table or it's gonna hit the floor. So watch what happens when I let go. It didn't hit the table. It didn't hit the floor because I decided to do something to prevent what would have been inevitable. And we can all do that. And like I've said in several videos, it's all about consent. And they can trick you or scare you or tease you, manipulate you, pretend to be your friend, to guide you. But ultimately, you make the decision of what you want to do and what you don't want to do. So if you want to sit there and believe there's nothing you can do to change things, you're absolutely right because you will not change anything. And you create that destiny. In other words, if I said I cannot do anything to drop this, to keep this pen from falling, it falls. But if I stop it, I change it.
I have the power just like you have that power. And so many people say they come here because they want to be inspired. You have to start inspiring yourself. You have to realize that today is the day that I have to do something nice. Actually, no, it shouldn't be have to, want to do something nice. Because for some reason, fellow human beings are hurting other fellow human beings for whatever reason. Whether it's the joy of making fun of someone, the joy of knowing that you'll never be caught in the things that you do, the, the, the excitement of knowing that you can influence somebody else's life in a negative way and make them scared, and some get paid to murder and torture and experiment on fellow human beings. And when we sit around and do nothing to stop it, it is our way of saying it's okay. And I think it's time we don't say it's okay anymore to them torturing animals, to them destroying our planet, to stealing our wealth, to hurting our fellow man and our fellow woman. Because if we don't do anything, we're letting it happen. We're allowing destiny to take control because we say we can't change anything. And then what's the purpose of being here then? Because think of it, if there is a God and he's sitting there testing us to see how we react to things, what incentive is there for humanity to survive if all we are going to do is hurt people and look the other way or pretend nothing is going on or allow it to happen? To see somebody hurting another person in the distance and just continue to walk on. To see a person lying in the street with nothing to eat and you step over them. To see criminals in the governments and in the banks stealing from your fellow man and woman, taking their homes, and we allow it to happen. Now, I'm not saying we need an armed revolution because... That doesn't make us any better. If we go around whatever justification and say, we need to kill these people who are killing us, then they've still won because they've, they've gotten us to lower our vibration to their level. There has to be a better way. I may not have all the answers, but I know damn well that I will not spend my life going into other people's houses and invading their property, of to go in and try and hurt somebody because it was pleasurable, to go on somebody's internet page and attack them. I will never take any money to hurt another person. I will do my best to help, and I want people on my side. I want people to be inspired. I want people to say, I can't sit around and do nothing anymore, but we have to do it a better way. There have been wars, revolutions, civil war, civil wars, which I find funny. Civil and war. There's an oxymoron for you. But we've had these battles throughout our history. And has it gotten us any better? If you want to continue to do the same thing over and over again, that is the true definition of insanity. We have to find a better way. And it's as simple as saying no. There are plenty of ways to stop a bully. You don't have to put a bullet in his head. You don't have to threaten his life. You just have to get a bunch of good people willing to stand up and say no. You know, just imagine you're walking down an alley and you see some bastard raping a girl. It's very easy to walk away and pretend or say, oh, I don't want to get involved. And he may even have a gun or a knife. But just imagine if 100 good people walked down that alley and said, put your gun down, leave that girl alone, and get the hell out of here. Do you think he's going to keep on raping her? Because you know what? He may even get a couple of shots off, but he ain't going to stop it. And that's why you could think of a drop of water as being absolutely harmless. It rains on you all the time, so several drops of water can do nothing. But just imagine if an ocean came roaring at you. And an ocean is nothing more than billions, if not trillions, if not how many droplets of individual water, which is made of particles that are all somehow connected. And if you could see the beauty in that and the strength in that, you will see that alone, there's only so much you can do. But united, there is nothing we can't do. And I'm so tired of being bullied. I'm so tired of people trying to think negativity is going to win the day. It's only going to happen if we allow it. 
So if you appreciate this, I want you to watch it with somebody that you care about. I want you to favor and like it as a personal favor to me. Don't just come here to watch my videos and tell me how much you enjoy it if you plan on doing nothing. Spread your own word if you have to. But it's time. Otherwise, what the hell are we complaining about? Let's get it done. Peace.